They're coming to get you, Barbara. In Springfield, Oregon, dead Mopar muscle cars are coming back to life. Restored by Mopar master Mark Warman. Joined by his out of this world cousin Dougie. Oh, hi, Mark. His apprentice and daughter, Alyssa. Whoa, whoa, stop. And his childhood best friend, Royal. Mark hates everybody. His protege painter, Will Scott. You got one job. This is Graveyard Cars. So today's an exciting day. Mark is actually leaving the shop. That is very few and far between. And in most companies, that's exciting. Hey, the boss is gone. You know, everyone's going to take it easy. But not here at Graveyard Cars. A few months ago, I got a phone call from a gentleman up in Gaston, Oregon, who had two cars for sale. I'm always posting on Facebook that we are buying cars because we're trying to develop our inventory for Graveyard Motors, our specialty 1970-style car lot that we want to develop one day. Uh, so I went up myself a few months ago and looked at everything. Beautiful cars, beautiful everything. The work that had been done on the Charger is absolutely outstanding. It's the same quality of work that we would do. So I felt compelled to buy that car. With Mark, the one thing is, is if, if you work a weekend, if you stay late, or if he's not here, his expectation's actually higher. So a lot of these new guys will think, oh, hey, you know, the main boss is gone, we got a free day. It doesn't work that way. When Mark's not here especially, you need to get twice the work done. So we have a gorgeous 1970 Cuda here that's going FM3, Moulin Rouge, Panther Pink. Favorite color, hands down, never done it before. And it's even better than that, it's on my favorite Mopar, which is a 70 Cuda. So it's like a win-win. The only downfall to this whole process, it's like, the, like almost my dream car we're getting ready to do, we're not building the whole car. We'll get the body and paint done, and then we'll ship it off to the owner for him to build it, even though I have talked to him extensively about letting us do it, but he seems to want to do it himself. So everybody thinks, oh, that's quick in and out. And it's actually even more stressful, because when the client comes to pick up their car, they have nothing to look at other than body and paint. So gaps, the paint job, uh, body lines, really has to just be 100%. Michael did a great job on it like normal, gives it over to us. We do our normal prime and block three times. We're not doing the pre-paints any longer. And Noah has been my longest helper that I've ever had. It's been over a year now. We're at that point now where I have him actually spraying color, doing jam work, getting in there and doing all that little stuff, getting used to having a gun in his hand. And he's doing a remarkable job. So he jammed a lot of this car and it looks amazing. Um, he's not ready for final paint yet. I'm hoping we're gonna get him there soon because then I can take like days off and I don't have to worry because he can cover it. It's funny, we, we have so much equipment here and we have the best of everything. Mark makes sure whatever we need, we have. The one last piece that we didn't have was a paint shaker. And it's crazy to think, but we didn't. It is so nice because we can mix it, jam something, do whatever, put that paint aside for a few months, bring it back, throw that thing on the shaker, because you can only stir those things so good, but putting it on a shaker ensures that it's all mixed back together like the day you sprayed it, so your color is gonna match. So he still does that old school method of, you know, putting a piece of paper up on the side of the booth, then he'll spray his material out onto that paper on the, on the wall and then he can see a spray pattern if he needs to adjust the gun, make sure the gun's spraying properly. Those are all great techniques. I recommend them to everybody. You know, he'll find the more he paints, he won't even have to do that because he can just pull a trigger, look at it, and adjust it that way. We paint the inside of the fenders. I know factory didn't do it, but it's just those little, little things. It's attention to detail. It'll guarantee that, you know, it's never gonna rust. It looks amazing. And it's a very transparent color. So he's got to put five or six coats of that pink on there and then clear it. And that's protected and it's, I mean, it's literally sealed off 100%. 
So doing the inside of the fenders, while it's completely unnecessary, it just makes for a better job and the longevity of the car, it's gonna outlive the owners. With that being said, I come in to spray this gorgeous 1970 Cuda FM3 Moulin Rouge, and he's done his silliness before he goes where he just masks it up, and what about this, and what about that? Which I love if it's real, but it's not real. It's just the more silliness, you know, that reminds you, hey, I'm gonna be all over this car when you're done with it. So him and Doug are out of town. We gotta make sure this whole shop goes absolutely perfect, and we just really make him happy. So when he comes back, he can be like, wow, you guys did a great job without me here. So the reason for this field trip is Doug and I are going to put all of the body panels back on the charger so they're safe, get it loaded on the rollback, round up all the parts for that car. At that point, I will reveal the other car that uh, everybody's gonna be excited to see. But for now, we gotta get the car together, loaded up on the rollback, all the parts, and ready to come back. You excited? Yeah, I'm excited. Dougie wants to get the 69 Charger out and wreck it like he used to in the old days, so I'm not gonna let him do that. Yeah, Here, boss. All right. All right, here we go. All right, Rooster, let's do it. Roll it back. I showed you a picture of this, though. Now, this is the first time for Doug to see the car. I didn't share pictures with him before we got up there. I know that when I first saw it, I was blown away at the quality of the body and paintwork, at the fit and the finish, how nice that is. Very nice. That beautiful, look at yeah. that. Ooh. T5, gets a white vinyl wow. top. The color, of course, the T5 copper is beautiful. Well, it's not the first car we've ever done in that. Yeah, nice. Let's go ahead and set this back here. Okay. But this is the first time Doug had an opportunity to see the car, and I think he was as blown away as I was when I saw it for the first time. All right. Already did the blackout on the back end. Oh, nice. You know, I hate to say this, but I'm not sure that, that Will could do any better on the paintwork. <laughs> this is, I'm not the kind of guy that would go back and give him crap about it, but I mean, if he could turn him out like this, I'd be a rich man, right? This looks really nice. Looking under the hood of the car, the majority of the things are right. Now, this is a numbers matching car. That means it has the original vehicle identification number on the block and on the transmission. That's numbers matching. In this case, he did a great job of doing the detail work so far. There are some things that need to be corrected, which I will do once the car gets back. Look at the engine compartment. He did a good job. Yeah. You know how you like to always put these spark plug wire separators on backwards? Uh-huh. He put them on the right way. He did? Yeah. Why? I don't know. <laughs> It's a crazy effort to make it look good. So like the spark plug wire separators, it looks like those were put on after the engine was painted, so we'll have to paint those to match the Hemi Orange. He has the dipstick tube painted Hemi Orange, which your common sense tells you it should be, but in reality, that was put in after the engine was painted, so that should be raw. Uh, some of the suspension components he had done, they're phenomenal upgrades, but they're not OEM, so we will have to change out like the sway bar and some of the tie rod ends and detailing items underneath there. For the most part, for the lion's share, it's very OE correct, so it's a great platform for us to pick up from there and move forward. Yeah, and he's got the Corbin clamps and torsion clamps on there, and all those things we work on quite a bit together. <laughs> is that an original radiator? 294-9053. Is it an 053? Yes, sir. I believe that's right. Now, just a quick side note on the radiator for this car. So it's a 69 Dodge Charger, it's a 440. One would think it gets a 26 inch radiator, the max cooling, but that was optional unless you had air conditioning that was standard. But otherwise, the max cooling was optional. So for this particular car, it's not coded for a 26 inch radiator, it's coded for a 22. So the number on the top of the radiator, the 2949053, is absolutely correct. If it was a max cooling car and it was designed to have the 26 inch, it would be a 2949055 radiator. So just a little bit of trivia stuff there for you. And by the way, that would be the same radiator part number, 2949055 would be the correct part number if it had air conditioning as well. Which in 1970, they changed that. And if you had a radiator, it was a different part number with a 26 inch max cooling. So if you had non-air conditioning, it'd be a 2998-956, which is what you see behind your 440 and your 426 with max cooling. But if it was an air conditioning H51 car, it would have a 2998-961. So, just the kind of stuff that floats around the tray's head from day to day. 
Very nice. Looks like original aprons. It was a pretty solid car. Uh-huh. So look at your aprons. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Original spot welds. Mm-hmm. Paintwork looks nice. When I was up in Gaston, if you must go looking at the car, I decided then that the best way to transport the car, because all of the panels had freshly been painted and were in such nice shape, we have no intention of repainting that car. The best transporting of the car, the safest, would be to put the body panels back on that have the most vulnerability for getting damaged if they were floating around in the back of a van. So we wanted to put on the doors, fenders, and the hood. The deck lid, it didn't have all the hardware with it. At least it wasn't installed on the cars, and we weren't in a position to be able to put it on. So we just loaded it up separately. But those are the panels that need to go on the car for it to come back. Just finish What do you the think? Car, huh? Would you like to put this car together and rear end it with your mom's Cadillac? Uh-huh. God, that'd be great, wouldn't it? <laughs> that'd be the best. I don't know if I could hurt this thing. You see that sway bar on this thing? Oh, yeah. That looks like yeah. one of those Adco sway bars, a big one. No, that's going to be real pretty. It's going to go quick, too, because that's our biggest hang-up, is always in the body shop and the paint shop. That's always the biggest slowdown that we have. Boy, it looks real good, though. Yeah, this is nice. Looking forward to seeing the white top, white bumblebee, white interior. Oh, boy. Yeah. It's going to be pretty. T5. Uh-huh. Hey, Doug. Yes, Mark. We've been in here about five, ten minutes. <laughs> yeah. Are you at all curious what's under that? Oh, I didn't even notice it. <laughs> you know how I am. Yeah, that's special. Television, right? No, it's fine. It's fine. Now, one of the things I'll never understand about Doug, you walk into a room and you see this beautiful 69 Charger, and here over in the corner is another car. I mean, the first thing I would do in my brain is say, what is underneath that car cover? Well, I know. Pretty much anybody with an IQ over room temperature would know, but Doug didn't quite recognize all of the physical cues of the body. More importantly, he didn't care. So, yeah, that's okay. We're all different. We're all wired differently. Got another car over there, huh? Yeah. yeah. What's that all about? If you can't tell what that is sitting there like that, I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna bolt this together and I'll show you before we go home. Does that sound fair? Uh-huh. You wanna put doors, hood, deck lid, fenders on this car? Yeah. You wanna scratch them? No. <sighs> Man, take Why would I do that? How you doing? <laughs> all right, let's put some panels on. Okay, he's got hood, fenders, doors, deck lid. Everything is over here. We have some stuff up on the shelf. Valances, we're just going to put those in the van. Muse bumpers all go in the van. There's some extra parts we're going to round up. Those will go in the van. So we'll put everything on the car that makes sense, and we'll get it transported back to Spring Tucky. Head south. Let's do it. You balance the back while I set the front here. Now, what's great about this little field trip is this is more like it was when we were kids. All right, when we were kids, we didn't have anything. I had a carport, he had a little broken down garage up at his dad's house with a gravel floor. You did everything manually. It's not like back at the shop, right? Back at Graveyard Cars, it's Shangri-La back there. You got bin pack lifts and, and, and above ground lifts, mid-rise lifts. You got shop crane equipment for carrying engines and transmissions. You got door jacks and fender jacks and you got rotisseries, frame rack. You got all the best of everything. But out here, this is like coming full circle for the tray and the rooster. See how we're kind of looking fair there at the bottom? Mm -hmm. So you want to just go ahead and tighten up the, the bottom one. The ratchet's inside the car on the floor. Try to get try to tighten it from the inside. Top one's also. Go ahead and tighten the top one now. Okay. Same thing happened in, uh, I think it was Rocky IV, when, um, Remember Pauly? Rocky was over fighting. Oh, it was Rocky V. It was Rocky V. Yeah. Rocky had been over there fighting uh, Ivan Drago. You know, if he dies, he dies, and all that stuff. And he comes back to find out Pauly pissed all of his money away. So they couldn't live in the big mansion anymore. They had to move back to the old neighborhood. Full circle, man. That's when he fought Tommy Gunn. And he said, oh, my ring is out. <laughs> Tommy gun. Feeling good, yeah, got the door on. See, that hiked it up a little bit, but that's okay. It's okay for what we're trying to do, which is just, all we wanna do is get the car back safely and hauling the doors inside the van or possibly having something fall on them. The best place they can be is on the car. And that's pretty good, that's not bad. All right, let's try to put our fender on. I notice we don't have the studs or the clips for down low, so we'll just use a nut and bolt process on that and we only need one of them in there. 
So we need to get the fender out and put a few of the J-clips in it. Let's put the passenger's fender on this side. I'm gonna have you go to the middle position here so you can hold the, the fender on both ends. I'm gonna get a blanket and lay it down on a blanket. Well, if you can hold that for just a second, okay. I can go ahead and put these on. Don't need many. Probably put one here at the back for fun. Let me grab a couple of bolts. These are those goofy gold things that come in the kits. These aren't right. So you know, folks, those aren't right. They'll hold it, but they're not right. They're nice. Now let's give us a lot of gap so nothing stupid happens, right? Mm -hmm. Don't care if it's lined up perfectly, just don't want something stupid. All right. It's safe. That's the main thing is it's safe. Right. So then I have one up here already. I think it's fine. Uh, there's a hole in here for one. Let me put that in there. Okay. Nice. We're done on this side. So one of the cars I'm most excited to see get color on it is our 70 Cuda. It's a 340 automatic car, FM3 Moulin Rouge. If it was a Dodge FM3, it'd be called Panther Pink. Yeah, I all knew that. Black interior car. This car is the first FM3 we've ever done. This truly is. This isn't just for TV to make everybody at home happy. I'm truly excited to spray this, this car. I mean, I have a tattoo. I have the GYC tattoo with the little star filled in in pink. I just, I'm, when the owner comes to pick it up, I'm gonna talk to him about gifting it to me. Since I did most of the work on the car, probably won't happen, but at least ask. But I'm super excited. I, I'm truly treating this car like it's my own. And it's, I'm excited. Wish it was single stage, it's not, but this, it's the first time we've done it. So when it's your favorite color and it's your favorite car, it's just a win-win all the way around. So we're not doing the pre-paints anymore. So it's a little, not challenging, it's all easy, but you just gotta approach it differently. If the car was already pre-painted pink and you're going in there and just painting it pink again, a few coats, you're good to go. But the car's gray. So that means you really gotta make sure the coverage is there. We have spray out cars that have different shades of gray on it. And every time I put a coat on the car, I put it on the card. When you get to that fifth, sixth, seventh coat, you kind of hold that up to a light in the booth, and if it's covered on the card, then you're covered on the card, and you're good to uh, go ahead and finish clearing it and be done. I was very disappointed this car wasn't available in a single stage, because at that point, it's like three coats and you're out of there. But because it was base clear, it uh, was a super transparent color, and it just takes time. In previous seasons of Graveyard Cars, we restored this stunning 1970 Plymouth Barracuda convertible. It was a 383 two-barrel with air conditioning. What color was the engine? Was it corporate blue, turquoise, hemi orange? If you watched the episode, you should know the answer. Stay tuned after the break. I'll let you know how you did. All right, folks, welcome back. How'd you do on that one? So what color was this 383 two barrel with air conditioning in our 1970 Barracuda? If you said corporate blue, you are absolutely right. If this had been a high performance engine, it would have been Hemi orange. If it had been a 68 and earlier, it would have been a turquoise. In addition to the 383 two barrel, we added a rally hood, road lamps, it was a factory black bucket seat console shift interior, and we added the dual chrome outside sport racing mirrors. So one thing that I'm also gonna do that's different than normal with Mark being out of town, as I'm going through the paint process between the color, the clear, I'm actually stopping, stripping down, going out there and blocking the Phoenix Cuda. This is the car that literally blew up. Nothing left, firefighters ran across the 
roof and kicked in the quarters when the metal was soft. Literally destroyed the car. Nobody else can save it. Obviously, we can. If you're doing this at home, and I know you guys obviously don't have the equipment that we do and the atmosphere and all that good stuff, once you start painting the car, don't do anything else. Just see the job through. Don't go work on an engine. Don't do anything other than just finish the job. Because not only are you worried about cross-contamination, just keep your focus on the car, and it'll come out better. Because if your brain starts working or thinking about other things, your paint job suffers. Um, when I block a car, I always like to start at the top. And you can do it e either way. But if I start at the roof, you know, all the dust is just falling down, as silly as that sounds. If you start at the rocker, you're kind of dealing with the dust all the way up. So I start at the roof, move on to the you know, tops of the quarters and whatnot. Then at that point, you know, you have to make sure you mask off your body lines and then do the sides and then all the way down to the rocker. And then you can just jump on the other side and do the exact same process. The real critical spots on these cars is it's the side. You know, the roof, you know, they have a, a natural curve to them, so your eye doesn't pick up a lot. But the side of a car, especially, it depends on the car, you know, but the Challenger, they got such a pronounced body line that runs right through the middle. That dish rolls right in, so your eyes just pick up the line of sight, any imperfections. And then after that, then it just drops straight down. So the sides are so critical. You go to a car show, nobody looks at the roof because the roof always looks good. But everyone always just kind of leans over a little bit to see how that side looks. So the side is so important. I'll go ahead and drop the back down a little bit. Unbelievable. Not sure what's going on there. I'm a lucky guy. I, I get to do what I do every day on these Mopars and help bring cars back to life for people who wouldn't normally have an opportunity to do it. Paint the way, maybe? No, I don't think so. I think it's just a, a little bit of fight in there, because it can, right? Mm-hmm. Nothing told that it can't. It's what they do. Okay. But that sounds more like I'm a hero. Really, I'm also very lucky. And then I gotta try to... I get to hang out with my cousin, who I grew up with working on cars. I mean, we have so much history together. Worked on so many cars, so many motorcycles, go-karts, mini bikes. I mean, the list is long of the things that we've done and shared over the years. I need to bring the bottom of the door in real quick. So it's great for me to be able to get out, go on a little mini field trip like that, and just hang out and talk about the old times like we used to. Looking nice. How are we looking at the, oh yeah, beautiful. All right, we've got our door hung. All we got is the fender and the hood. So we have our 1971 Phoenix Cuda here. We're getting really close to the final paint on it. I've got one side already blocked out. So on a metallic car especially, and not just this one, but all metallic cars, that final block we'll do a 320, 400, give or take, depends how nice of a primer job it was. But we do the mask it up, block the whole car down with 320. Once that's done, then we will blow the whole car off, double check, look for pinholes or any silliness. And if all that signs off and looks good, we'll re-guide coat the whole car and then we'll go over it with 600. Finishing the car in 600 ensures that you can seal it, go right to your metallic and you don't have to worry about any sand scratches at all. When the car is primered and we're taking it through the primer process, I wanna make sure I preserve the style line that the body man created. There's a couple ways. You can just take your tape, kind of eyeball it, run your tape line down the whole side of the car, which Mark is actually really good at. I'm okay, but it's what I like to do is just make a little mark right on that style line on the fender, make one on the door, make one on the quarter. So when I take my three quarter inch masking tape, I'll start on the fender and I'll slowly pull it back and make sure I hit all the spots that I've marked and make sure that line is straight so when I block it, I don't put a wobble in that line. I preserved it just the way the body man gave it to me so that line stays nice, crisp, and sharp through the whole process. Mm -hmm. 
With the car being all sanded out now, it's the details you really have to pay attention to. So it's a matter of going to all the door edges, the quarter panel edges, fender edges, make sure there's no loose bondo there. So while the whole body of the car could look amazing, if you don't clean those edges up and make sure that looks good, it'll make the whole car look bad. So it's good to take like a good half hour to an hour, do it once or twice over, double check everything, feel everything, make sure that every edge, every jam is just as good as the body of the car. Mass up, ready to go. The whole car's finished in 600. I'll put one or two coats of sealer on it just to ensure that it's gonna be great. And then we can start painting. I'm just gonna put this hinge on real quick. I think we still have to put that fender on, but... Oh, there's no J-clip in there. I got it. Mm -hmm. Okay, no problem. No worries, we're trained professionals. We know what we're doing. I'm gonna grab an alignment tool. Yeah, if you can drop it down in there, yeah. Okay. I like it. Got it. Okay, let's tighten it. Yeah, well, you had the front one. Okay, raise the front up a little bit. Until I say, okay, down. A little more, up, there you go. Tighten it right there. We're gonna put a fender on. Yep. Let's do it. Okay. With the base coat being all done, it's time to clear it. Because there's so many coats on that, I turn the heat up in the booth a little bit, let it sit a little bit longer, go in there, tack the whole car off, get any dust off it that may have uh, crept in there. So I do three coats of clear. That clear is so thick. It's very easy for someone that does it every day, you know, but for people at home, you know, you get your first coat on, and the way your first coat lays on is the way your last coat's gonna look. When you put your first coat on, you want it to look like you're done with the car. You want it to look that nice. So I go in there, put the first coat on, really take your time, go over everything, lay it down good, and then give it, you know, it depends on the weather, the temperature you got the booth at, give it 45 minutes, half hour, and then do the same thing two more times. So that way, when you walk out of the booth, you kind of do a once over, make sure, because runs, runs happen to everybody. But, Make sure there's no runs or anything that you know won't cut out in the cut and buff. Do it once over on it, and then it's done. And that's what protects the base coat, makes it shiny, makes it all pretty, and that's all anybody really cares about. So now there's some interesting things about the paint here that I just want to share real quick that I don't know if we'll elaborate it on. So FM3, when you look up the formula in PPG, we always use PPG because that's the company that sprayed the, made the colors for the cars back in the day. They no longer offer that in a single stage paint. Originally it was an enamel, and it was, and it's not a metallic, so it was just a, a single stage color that would have been applied to the car. So today we use uh, Deltron Concept, which is a single stage polyurethane. They don't have the formula in single stage, so we have to build it out of base coat, clear coat. It'll end up being a much richer than the factory one is by far, but it's a lot more steps of painting. It takes seven to eight coats to get full coverage. Then you have to come back in and do three coats of clear over the top of it because you're gonna wet sand and buff it. So when you talk about going around that car when it's time to do the full paint, it's 11 trips around that car. So keep that in mind when you're watching that. Car came out amazing. So this car really took seven coats of color to cover. It took a while to paint this car. Then we cleared it. Everything just start to finish just went perfect. Give it right back to Noah. He starts to cut and buff on it. And like I said, it's just, just the little details to spend a little extra time. He does a cut and buff on it. Then at that point, it's ready to go to assembly. Just for like decals, a couple little odds and ends that we're gonna do. And then we can deliver it to the customer. Okay. 
Okay, like that. So with the doors and the fenders on the 69 Charger, it was time to put the hood on. This is a large panel. Typically speaking, we have three people do it. One person will be on one side, one on the other side, putting the bolts in, lining them up, and then there's somebody at the front. Since it was just Doug and I, we grabbed one of the uh, guys in the production team, the audio guy. I'd call him Moose. Oh, okay, I got my upper one. All right, Moose, go up in the front. Just straight push away from you. Yep. And a hair more right there. Beautiful. That's too easy, Doug. Yeah. It is. All right. And hand me your ratchet. Let's see what we got here. Okay, here, Doug. Watch that corner back there. I set it really high for a reason. Okay. It'll work. I think it'll work. I mean, the fender needs to come back half a foot, so that's why we're dealing with what we're dealing with. Maybe not half a whole half of a foot, but maybe a quarter inch. Uh huh. Okay, everything's on. We got wide gaps, a little tight here, so we're gonna put extra cushion in there. We're gonna strap the hood shut with our cushions in, strap the door shut, finish loading the car up, and we can get it loaded on the rollback and get out of Dodge. Sounds good. Good job, buddy. Nice work. Well, thank you, Mark. What's that thing you do when you do a high five? You get all... Oh, we do this, and then... No, no, you get all spooked. Spook me? Yeah. I don't remember. Yeah, it was eight seconds ago. Cut. Now, if you guys recall, at the 2018 SEMA show, the president of Mopar, Pietro Gorlier, presented me with the 1,000 horsepower very first engine, serial number 0001. By the way, that engine's yours. You can use it in one of your project cars coming up. How about that? Are you serious? I'm serious. Wow! Serious? So, yeah, seriously, it's yours. So, okay. So let's get off the stage for the far... <laughs> I can take it now? Yeah, if you could yeah. carry it on your back, you can I take it. this show. That's crazy! And the only caveat was that at the 2019 show in Las Vegas at the SEMA show, I had to have it in a car. It had needed to be running in a car so they could display it. So what did I think of when I thought of that? The world's most evil engine needs to go in the world's most evil car, the 1958 Fury, Christine. I had a gentleman reach out to me and say that he was interested in purchasing the car. He loved the car, he wanted me to finish it, but one of the caveats was he didn't want the hell of an engine. He just didn't want that in there. He was more my, wired like me towards the OEM appearing stuff. So we spent quite a bit of time going back and forth, back and forth about what to do, how to do it, why you should, why you shouldn't. And at the end of the day, he ended up purchasing the car from me, less the Helephant engine, less the Silver Sport transmission. And that brings us up to where we are today. And so we put the engine together to look exactly as the one in the movie would look. That's what the gentleman wanted. Pop that hood and there's a few scenes in the movie where you can see the engine. He wants this car to look exactly like that. So that is what Will is doing now. He is painting that engine the gold color that was used in the movie. Not the original Golden Commando gold. The director wanted a different gold, so he went with a mid-70s gold metallic, a GM color. Oddly enough, again, another GM color, just like they did with uh, some of the other cars, the movie Hollywood cars. So I went ahead and painted the one engine orange, and then I find out that Marcus sold Christine, and the person that bought it doesn't want the elephant for whatever reason. So we actually have a motor to go in Christine, and it doesn't go orange because it's an older one. It actually goes gold, movie correct. So it was actually kind of cool because I was able to find out they painted it an early 80s Chevy color. So I got the paint, sprayed it out. It's a beautiful gold, did it in a single stage. So I shot the whole entire engine, looks, looks great actually. It was actually nice to do something different like this. And then now Mark's got that engine 
that he could throw in Christine and that I can hear the story on this later because why you wouldn't want the hell of it makes no sense to me. But we do have a gold engine, which is the first here at the shop. At the end of the day, that thing is going to look exactly the way Christine from the movie did, and that owner is going to be thrilled. In an earlier season of Graveyard Cars, we restored this gorgeous 1970 Roadrunner in FY1 Lemon Twist Yellow 383. True or false, the transmission behind that 383 was a three-speed manual. If you think you know the answer, stay tuned after the break and I'll let you know how you did. Right, ghouls, welcome back. How did you do on that one? I threw you a little bit of a curveball. So if you watched the episode and you answered true, that it was a three-speed manual transmission, you are correct. That's how it left the factory. However, we converted it over to the pistol grip four-speed. This car was originally a three-speed manual, which is one of 584 383 hardtop roadrunners in 70. In addition to that, it had the 15.7 rally wheels, cold air induction hood, and the transverse black reflective tail stripe. Go <laughs> harder, Jerry. <laughs> 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 Thank you for ruining the end of it. You're the best. Okay. Who's gonna steer it? Go ahead and get, we need to get it into position. Go ahead. Oh, is it in park by chance? There's no drive shaft in it. Okay. Going the right direction right now. Does it need to go that way? Turn it that way? Does it need to go that way? It's a question. All right, we did great. So we've got the fenders, hood, door on there. The deck lid, we didn't have all the hardware to put it on, so we moved it inside the van along with all the other parts. So our van is just chocked full. Right now, Doug is finishing the load up of the car. So as soon as he gets it locked down, I'm gonna bring him back inside. I don't know how he could have missed the car that's under there, but just between Yuns and Means, Yuns is you and means is me. The car that I'm gonna show him, I actually bought it. It's part of the package deal. I just didn't tell him yet. So I'm kind of excited to see his reaction to it because it's pretty obvious what it is looking at it. We'll see if your guesses are right. Let's do this. Please tell me that you have at least a clue. Take a good look at it. Take a, we'll take the cover off. Uh -huh. And red is not the right answer. It's not red? No, it's not red. Tell me something else. Tell me if we've, if you've ever seen, well, look at the tires. White walls. They're not just white, they're wide white walls. Uh-huh, Right. yeah. Billy Joel used to sing about that, remember? And one thing I never get tired of seeing is Doug's processor. You know how computers have processors, we all do. It's fun for me to sit back and watch him process things because he's a very thoughtful young man and he very pragmatic, if I may use that word, that's okay. <laughs> Do you recognize any other physical characteristics underneath the car cover that could give it away? Fins. Fins, that's right, that's right, fins. Have we done any cars with fins on them? Uh-huh. What have we done with fins on them? Christine? We did. Uh-huh. We did. What was what was Christine? I always forget. But it's a slow process. It takes a little while for those gears to get spinning. A Plymouth. It was, that's uh -huh. right, that's yeah. right. If you know the answer, just throw it right out oh. there. Yeah, uh, what year was that? 58. Hey, that's better, yeah. What model was it? What model did we make it? Fury? Yep. What model was it oh. originally? I don't know. Belvedere. Really? Take a look. You know, you buy him books, you send them to school. <laughs> they throw the teacher out the second floor window. Who does that? All right, we'll see how close you are. Right oh there says it all. Oh my gosh. Is that cool? Wow. 1958 Plymouth Belvedere. 
That's awesome. All original paint car. No way. Yeah. This car is all original, original paint. The floors still have the undercoating and the sound deadener on them. It's a solid old car. It doesn't have the, uh, well, they didn't, the Furies only had them, the, the wings. Uh-huh. But it comes with a set of wings. Okay. The guy, back when you could get them, 20 years ago, however long he's had the car, bought the front and rear bumper wings, chrome metal extensions that go on the front bumper and the rear bumper on the sides. Christine, the movie car, had it. The original ones have dried up. So on Christine, I found the front ones for $2,500. I paid $3,500 for the rear ones. So what's that, $6,000 just in wings? This guy had a mint original set inside the car. If it comes with a set of wings, what's that mean? I don't know, can I see the car? Yeah. Please, who cares about wings? It's not gonna fly anyway. <laughs> okay. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Wow. Is that crazy or is that oh crazy? Oh my gosh. Look at that, original paint. Two door? Two door hard top. Oh my gosh. It's a Belvedere. Belvedere. Look wow. at that interior, what's left of that interior. That's so cool. The point behind me saying it came with it, Doug, is because I bought this one with the package. Seriously? Yeah. Yep. We got both cars. This is awesome. I always wanted, I wanted my own Christine, but then when we put the elephant in it, it no longer was the Christine I wanted because I wanted my own real live movie car version of it. So I kind of had my eye out and I was blown away when I saw this. Oh, this Good is Good luck finding a better one. This is too awesome. Like I said, always wanted a Christine car, but I wanted mine to be anatomically correct. Does it run? I think it does. Ho oh, ho, I'm gonna drive it Look home. Look at that. I wanna drive it home. Is it two or three buttons? Topped up over 120. One, two, and drive. Three-speed automatic, so it already has all the correct push buttons, where our Belvedere was only a two-speed automatic. Oh, man, look at this. Huh? <laughs> Does it say 120 or 150? 120. All right, we're gonna make that go. We're gonna send that dash back to old Jim Rawa back there at uh, Fury Jim. Uh -huh. He's the guy that did all the dash and stuff on our Christine. Fury Jim, uh, Jim Rawa, who's on Facebook, he's like this guru, he's like the me of uh, the future looking cars, 57 to 59, or 57 to 60, I don't remember the exact group. But he like forgot more about these than anybody else will ever know. He'll make me all the interior pieces like he did for Christine, the bucks for the doors, and the patterns for the seats. Gosh. Just amazed at how solid it is. Look at this, my jams were rotted off the car, my rockers were rotted out, my floors were rotted out. That still has the original undercoating on it. No corrugated floor. Check out those floors. <laughs> Guys seeing this? Wow. Amazing, huh? What a clean old car. <laughs> oh, this is nice. Yep. Wow. That's it, that's the big one. All right. That's solid. This is going to be a breeze compared to the other one to build. So when we get back, I'd like to see you get this car disassembled, dipped, and have all the body work done by the weekend. By the weekend? Yeah, and put the charger together. Okay. So at the end of the day, I will be able to have my own Christine. All right. You're the best, Doug. Yeah, I know. You're the best. Thanks for coming up here with you me. You always tell me that, too. Yeah. Okay, we got reservations at the zoo, so fire up the tow truck. Okay. All right. So being able to go up and do this, like I say, every day is the funnest thing in the world. I don't know how I could be any more blessed.